So this morning, actually, we are experiencing a power outage. Like I was at the store and they couldn't cast me out because they couldn't weigh anything without power. Flipping the switch. Hey guys, and welcome back to another video on my channel. Over our five months living in Beirut, we stayed in three different apartments in three very different parts of Beirut. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing some of the experiences that I found to be unique about living in an apartment in Beirut, as they do things a little bit differently over there. I hope you enjoy this video. If you want to get an idea of kind of some of the things that you're gonna have to deal with and some of the perks to renting an apartment in Beirut. So the first thing you should know about living in Lebanon is that there are daily power outages for three hours a day and they happen at different times every day. So it makes it kind of hard to predict when it's gonna happen. And during those times, it'll switch from the grid power of the city into a backup private generator that the uh, apartment building uses. And usually your Airbnb or the place you're staying will have a backup generator because this has been going on since the Civil War for some time now. And the problem is that when it switches to that backup generator power, it can't really withstand as much electricity load as the grid power can. And so you have to really be careful about how many things you have plugged in. Otherwise the system will just get overloaded and the power will just cut out and then have to restart again. Which is really difficult because if you're you know, connected to the Wi-Fi and the power cuts out, it'll take like, I don't know, three to four minutes for the power to turn back on again. And it makes a really inconsistent uh, Wi-Fi experience during those three hour blocks. So this morning, actually, we are experiencing a power outage uh, period. And for example, we've got the heaters on because it's a stormy day and it's actually really cold out, uh, inside the apartment as well. So as you can see, the, um, these are the room heaters and the light just went out in it. So in a few seconds here, we'll hear a little sound and it'll, yep, turn right back on. So we've got the heaters on in all three rooms. And on top of that, we've got the washing machine running because we just got back from a long weekend trip somewhere and we've got a lot of laundry. That was thunder. Uh, so, you know, for example, we only have um, the room heaters on and the washing machine and yet that is enough to trigger this um, overload of electricity to the... Um, to the backup generator. And so we're probably gonna have to figure out um, something to turn off in order to actually be able to have access to Wi-Fi and in order to work. So it's a problem solving situation. Like I was at the store and they couldn't cast me out because they couldn't weigh anything without power. So <laughs> we just hung out and he taught, taught me swear words. <laughs> Until the power came back? Until the power came back. Yeah, it's, I think it's citywide during these three hours. Not just us. Is there anything that you think we should turn off in order to... Yeah, like if we wanna help, I don't know if it will actually help because I think everybody's just got their heaters on, but we could probably turn off the water heater, the washing machine, Maybe we can kill one of the heaters in the air conditioning. And maybe unplug some of the laptops. But, mm. but that's about it. That's all we can do. And that probably won't, won't do it. We'll just have power cuts until for three hours. Yeah, I mean, on days like this when it's so cold, people are using a lot of uh, electricity to keep their homes, apartments warm. So it's tough tough these days. I think more so than, than summertime. But who knows, maybe the extremely hot days are also very energy consuming. 
And in some apartments, you might not even have the luxury of your appliances turning back on once you've reduced the load on the generator. And you actually have to go down to the basement or wherever the power switch is and manually flip it back on every single time it goes out. All right, so the power has just gone out again. All right, so here we go into the basement. Now I have to do this every single time the power goes out. So I'll be just I will be just flipping the switch. These are all the other people's electricity uh, um, outlets. So I could be doing this like multiple times a day. Like during the three hour power outages, I could be doing this like, I don't know, four, three or four times per day depending on, you know, the weather. If we're having stormy weather or cold weather, people will be having their heaters on a lot. And in that case, the electricity won't be able to withstand very much. And uh, yeah, so it's done. And uh, here we are. Electricity restored. So you see this heater above me? It is one of the largest users of electricity in this entire apartment. But it is also essential during a Lebanese winter because there's so many days when it's rainy, it's very cold, it's in like the 40s to 50s Fahrenheit and it's kind of unbearable to be in the apartment when you don't have sun, it's cloudy, it's raining, and it's freezing cold without one of these heaters. The problem is when those things are on throughout the house, they cause the power to cut in and out. So it's almost like you have to choose between stable Wi-Fi slash Wi-Fi at all or being warm. And we had to get particularly creative on how to solve this problem. So. What we ended up discovering is that this guy, this beautiful radiator right here, can use a lot less electricity than running a space heater in the room, like this one. And it's a lot more effective too, especially if you pair it with a blanket. Like this guy. So what we like to do is we like to have the heater going pretty warm and then we like to drape the blanket over the radiator and then because it's heating the air inside of the blanket it tends to keep us very very warm on our legs and as long as we're wearing something warm on top we're good right or if your apartment has something like that, which is a gas heater, um, don't worry, it's out of gas. So having something on top of it is just fine and we're not using it. Uh, that was also very effective at the beginning before the gas ran out. The very cool thing though about this whole power outage problem is that, you know, it really has taught us an important lesson about conserving energy. And I think that's one of the really cool things about traveling is that you learn all of these lessons that you might not have been forced to learn otherwise. So Lebanon definitely taught us about power usage and over usage and basically what's really necessary. So I've actually talked about Beirut's garbage service on YouTube before in one of my shorts. And basically it's really convenient because 
once you want to take your trash out, you don't have to go like all the way downstairs and find the nearest trash can like you do in the US. You can just literally put it outside your door in your apartment complex and then if you come back later in the day, it'll be gone magically because um, some guy comes in and takes it and usually you'll have to pay the guy a certain amount every week. Uh, otherwise, the concierge of the apartment will do that. Yeah, go ahead. Shokran Pauzi and Akbar. Who is Fauzi? So Fauzi is our uh, concierge, and if you're lucky enough, you will get a concierge as awesome as Fauzi who will help you out with literally anything you could ever need. Cleaning the apartment, bringing your luggage to and from your apartment, um, exchanging money for you, just being a cool guy, like, he's there, if you're lucky. So here in Beirut, how you get your water is kind of a process. So basically, there's one designated day of the week where you put out all of the water gallons that you've drank, that you've finished, that are empty, and then at some point during the day, the person who works for whatever water company you get your water from comes and knocks on your door and they will uh, do the deal with you. You'll pay them for however much they charge per gallon and you'll get new water. And it's really convenient because then you don't have to go to the store or worry about lugging around really heavy, uh, large amounts of water. And that's kind of how it works all around Beirut, as far as we've seen. In our second apartment, our concierge Fauzi would actually come up to our apartment personally and grab the uh, empty jugs and then come back later himself and replace them with the new full ones. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. And then I would just come down to his house on the ground floor of the apartment complex and pay him directly for the water. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 This is actually a video from our time in Beshara that I never got around to posting here on YouTube. And there was some bad weather that day. We actually got stuck in a whiteout up in the mountains. So we had to just kind of find a bunch of spontaneous, random things to do in and around Beshara. Uh, we checked out the airplane house in Miziara and uh, got up to a bunch of other random adventures. So I made this video, I put it together. For those of you who have been supporting me on Patreon as a way to say thank you, it's a 22 minute full length video and uh, if you'd like to support me additionally on Patreon, you would get access to it as well. The link to my Patreon is right here. Uh, I, once again, thank you to everyone who's already supporting me there. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.